Okay, guys, we are live. We're doing another Sunday live broadcast uh, from the Steve Rude Studios here. Actually in the Steve Rude Garage. This is where uh, our assistants put the things that we mail out to you guys. From us. Here, we the assistants put it all together and off in these very sticky cards. Eventually, or you press or fix. Um, the assistants are very complicated, and uh, we orders is that we on the world. And when I was helping this company, this kind of work to get mail around the world, but. When we started to do, when Capital Comics started to publish this, <clears throat> it already became kind of global. <clears throat> would get letters from pretty much everywhere. So that's kind of how it started. We, uh, it was fascinating that our first few letters from Capital Studios. The Capital Studios, uh, um, uh, we had an Marks, who was secretary, and the company grew a little bit. And uh, I believe publishers of canceled the whole line, which I don't think a lot about this. Um, and it was a movie, I think we saw the. Uh, That will say. <clears throat> I think a lot of you guys know what's going on during the month. I think a lot of you guys tuned in uh, to this thing. We're trying to find these the profile on the Nexus universe <clears throat> and get more uh, more uh, hits on social media. What's going on in the world is different. Um, I think everyone's in, in, in uh, celebrating. If you want, the thing that we've to do is to have office challenge me to do, to produce a coin slide day for <clears throat> what I've done. Right? It's illustration and uh, characters from the group in. And for some reason, character is getting a response. Um, <clears throat> yeah, in pretty much any kind of stuff, because that's uh, trained to do. That's what I like to do. That's what I've been practicing to do my whole life. Um, <clears throat> there's pretty much not been an area of artistic pursuit. Right? Uh, I get all purpose. I like to draw everything. I like to work every medium. So that, that's part of the fun for me. The people who just work in the medium, I understand that. That's very confining. And just for me, it's a place of multiple medium, multiple subject matters. So that's what I the things I've done so far. Um, so far, uh, uh, we've done 11 drawings, and they vary. You can see right here. How's the uh, the glare on these things right there? Bring it up a little more. Slide it. Okay. Down a little bit. Okay. And we deb debuted right here on YouTube. Where else would we do this sketch right here? Um, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Yeah. Is it, huh? I only know about YouTube. That's how I see these things. In the way, 
good or bad. So that analysis it was done style for design and working on tunes for our from uh, I just love these characters They're all designed to have both uh, a comic uh, very prominent in the uh, 50s and 60s and went on to do th later on is when the 80s came along so I did that this color I don't think these car colors finished it in the base marker meteor this guy could grow portions right here. So, uh, they're having a girl in the Hispanic. But back in the 60s, everyone was white. Um, she, she could turn visible, I, I, but I'm not sure. Can you have in so she could turn invisible? Oh, and then she could float because she, she could fly out. <clears throat> this was was um, in all these forms that were mainly listed as Marilyn Monroe, but really it was not Marilyn. It was a study from a pretty girl that I happened to have files. And I thought my uh, <clears throat> is pen and ink. Besides, and uh, <clears throat> even the guys like reflect Jenna Gibson, I admit that was one of the hard they ever worked in. A pen and ink is, is exactly what it feels like. It's getting out uh, ink, rendering. Lines. Not as easy as it looks, that's why I like to practice it. Um, I like doing sketches or illustration of um, costumes, actors. This is Gal in the Wonder Woman costume. Um, full rendered sketch. Good time with. Only consistent. In these, in these pieces are the eyes that are 11 by 14. Arcanese on the side of her hair, that's this layer from Star Wars. Right in the same material, the um, uh, illustration. Pretty much all these are done in a media kind of thing. They start off with a point and then it walks. Of water right density about the forms with and then I over more need soft forms uh, how do you call it it's not a soft medium you got to go in there and I'll record this guy at least Oh, it's sideways. So here's Frank right there. Worked that way too, but this is the way it was intended right here. And she's uh, Buzz Roy. We all knew that. Um, doing Supergirl from the, from the series. I don't think it really looks like her, but I gave it my best shot. And I had a lot of fun with it. These uh, <clears throat> these drawings are are done for my amusement. They're all things that I like to do. So if you want to see various characters that I've not seen within the month of September, it's because they're not really my thing. I'm doing these things because if I'm going to last the month of September, because they're characters that I like to draw. So forgive me for uh, indulging in my. General, the girl I for uh, for 35 years is in the hospital right now. Um, now, last week, I'm there. 
about her spleen and <clears throat> her female organs. Not that, but you know, somebody who can only pause thing. A great deal right now. She's loaded with. We're looking at a thirty thousand dollar bill for the operations. And if you wanted to pull through and, and <clears throat> come to life and help me the way she's always helped. Me. I mean, I would kind of be helpless with her um, in ways that you can't even imagine. I mean, I forgot how to do anything on. And she's the one that takes has taken over my life. Can't pay, pay bills anymore. Uh, you know how that goes, guys. You know, after for at least a year, you forget you forget how to do things. That's me. See about contributing to that. That I me going. Um, seeing the the books that I've been devoting my life to. Um, this is the first. Hesitate up <clears throat> ways a lot right here. You can see how thick the book is. <clears throat> but this is what I want to do. Um, the things that go in this book right here <clears throat> is I wanted to put a comic book that they um <clears throat> that the hearing does it is. Saw these things. It was a really, these kind of things. So the standard procedure in all the books now, <clears throat> but I've also included a lot of extras behind the things and a bunch of art. To There's also in the back I talk about the next cartoon show. Um, that is not a show, but a show of progress, a show that I've been working on for a long, long time. But Hollywood, what it is, the flea, environment that nobody knows what's, what's going on. Nobody knows anything. Uh, thank you, Will, William Goldman. Um, <clears throat> the process of waiting things out. But I'm getting very tired of waiting things out. So there's going to be some decisions coming up that uh, hopefully I'm going to inform you guys uh, the most voted next fans that we, that we know. And um, <clears throat> we'll see what I see. <laughs> then I'll tell you what's going on. The volume after this, for those of you that and never heard a word that I was talking about in previous video live streams, uh, the next upcoming book, find the ad for it right here. Well, lo and behold, <clears throat> where is it? That's it. Oh, I must have it here. So. The ink's right there. Boy, there's a lot of inks in here. Oh, for crying out loud. Are you kidding me? Are we in South? Problems again. John again with the sound problems. <clears throat> yeah, it's
<clears throat> okay, you guys, technical difficulties abound. What else is new? Um, I think we're going to call this show the uh, Faulty Microphone Show. But I want to know if you guys can hear me right now, okay? The tech people will tell me if you can hear me. So write in, <clears throat> tell me if you can hear me, okay? Because we're going without the, mi the official microphone, the stupid microphone uh, thing here, okay? So if we hear from somebody that you can hear me, we'll continue, okay? <clears throat> In the meantime, it's tea time. Sounds a lot better from here. Okay, audio is perfect. Really? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> who, who told us? Um, George Peter Gatsis. George Peter. Gatsis. What about Spielberg? Did he write in at all no. to tell us? No. No, <clears throat> but audio he says is perfect. <clears throat> Leave it to the genius like the dude who knows nothing about electronics. That's typical, right? All right, problem solved right here. <clears throat> where did the where did the news where did the microphone cut out before I was talk, talking about my great news right here? Was um, it about Gino in the hospital who was about to uh, die yeah. or what? <laughs> yeah, it was about her being in the hospital. That's when I, that's when I cut out. Mm -hmm. sure. All right. Well, Gino's in the hospital. Bill is thirty thousand dollars. See what you can do to help me out. Um, <clears throat> you guys know I'm working at Thune World. Did I talk? Did you hear me talk about that? Mm. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. So. Here's what I'm devoting my life to. Boy, I hate the recaps. Um, <clears throat> these oversized Nexus books right here. They're huge, they're, uh, they're hard covers, and they have the coolest stuff imaginable in here. I'm doing the whole thing, okay? That's all you need to know. <clears throat> uh, I'm not getting paid for them. Whatever you can do to help me out, it's gonna help pay for them. Logical, right? Of course. Uh, whatever, the cool, whatever cool stuff that we wanna talk about. We have a question of the week right here, okay? Uh, no, you're not getting a free drawing if you answer it right, because I'm overwhelmed right now. Whew, question of the week. Let me throw this one past you, okay? Are we still audible here? Mm -hmm. People can hear me? Yes. Do I need a microphone to shout it all the way to uh, Argentina? <clears throat> okay, here's the question. Some of you will know this, maybe. At least uh, it's, a, it's a long shot if you guys are, know this question that are tuning in. Okay, that's that's the, that's the thing here. <clears throat> what year did Steve Rood win his first professional award in comics and where? Um, do we have a time? Do we have a ticking clock right here? Do not. No? Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> there's a ticking clock. <clears throat> um, call in with your answers right now or type in your answers. I guess that's how it works with these machines here. I wouldn't know, um, <clears throat> being the Luddite that I am. So, call, um, yeah, let me know if you have the answer to that. Um, you'll at least get an, an announcement over the air right here in the Steve Rude uh, live show here every Sunday. So while we're waiting for that, um, <laughs> the pets are going crazy over here. Um, <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. Oh, the... Um, <clears throat> The illustrations that you see here are all for purchase. <clears throat> the prices are on the website. All that stuff is going to be there. So if you're interested, please buy them. We've only sold one. We need the bread. <clears throat> and we're not going to make prints out of them, okay? So they're one of a kind. Uh, we're also filming these these uh, these one of a kinds here for September, so you'll get a chance to see how I do them. They they go fast. I mean, they're like uh, a minute long. I think they're 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 speeded up. <clears throat> if you don't see me, um, if if I'm not being filmed to work on these things, it's because I forgot to turn the damn camera. <clears throat> That's, pr that's pretty much news right there. Now we're going to get into the real news right here. Um, <clears throat> we used to have this throat clearing problem, uh, which was really disgusting. <clears throat> but I solved it by something called throat clearing tea. 
We have two guesses. All right, we have two guesses for <clears throat> what year did I win my first professional award and where? Um, one person said, I can't remember the article that mentioned you receiving that award in the 90s. And someone else said, Russ Manning Award, 1984. <laughs> okay, and where was it, where was it um, where was that award awarded to me? Let's see if we can get the place. I mean, he said San Diego. I don't think that's big of a leap there. <clears throat> Let's take a wild just to take a wild guess. Okay, where it was held. <clears throat> The San Diego. Did he finish it for me? Not yet. He did say the same person. Um, he said, I am a great admirer of your work and I love your oversized hardcover. <clears throat> so this guy that also just wrote in and actually he just completely guessed it. Um, the award was given to me uh, as the Russ Manning Newcomer Award back in 1984. Uh, boy, was that a shock. <clears throat> uh, by 1984, remember, we started Nexus in 1981, and we had our first black and white issue out by then. <clears throat> um, so we had produced uh, several issues of Nexus by that time, so <clears throat> the idea of it being a newcomer award, you know, I didn't think I qualified even as a newcomer, but... Um, <clears throat> This was when San Diego was uh, a place you could breathe in and walk in without uh, stumbling over a hundred people or being trampled. And those were great days. That's when, that, those are my fondest memories of conventions before this thing got too big. <clears throat> now it's just, you know what it's like now. So uh, it's so big that I, I try not to even attend these things. They're so, they're so massive. I, if I'm gonna attend shows nowadays, I try to attend the, the, the very small ones. Just because they're uh, they're workable, <clears throat> and I have a chance to talk to people. But you know those old days. Oh God, the memories they were just fantastic. And plus, you know that those were the years that I uh, I was in my. Uh, we all had p our peers, you know, <clears throat> all the young guys, all in our uh, mid to late to, to early twenties were all part of that that uh, hangout group. So that's always part of the fun is, is hanging out with guys that, that are your own age and are uh, part of the part of the group that uh, is setting the trends for the latest books that are coming out. And it didn't matter if it was coming out of uh, whatever company, it just was you were part of that group and it was exciting to hang out at the parties and, and talk with all these, these new guys and the hot guys and uh, the cool guys and the cool girls that were getting into the field. And it was, you know, imagine how much fun that was because it was just so cool. So those are my, those are my greatest memories of conventions. And it continued throughout the entire eighties in part of the nineties. Uh, I think by the mid nineties, it was starting to get a little too crowded for me and there was new trends picking up. And um, then it started to be less fun than it was. In the 2000s hit, I tried to uh, let the new, the, new, um, <clears throat> the new barrage take over <clears throat> and let them have their fun. And I just, I just hung out of my studio just producing the work. I think that's kind of the way it should be sometimes. So. And then the group that uh, took over in the 2000s, they're eventually going to be replaced by someone else. That's the way it works in life. But yeah, so what's the guy's name that got the question right here? George Peter. George Peter? Uh, Peter. George Peter, guy with two first names. Okay, George Peter, congratulations. Um, I appreciate your, uh, your guessing right and writing in. And uh, he's also mentioned that he's loves, he loves the hard covers that are being produced these days. And uh, um, he's a big fan, so thank you very much for that. Um, <clears throat> if you wanna see some, new, some of the newest animation art here, Actually, it's not the newest, but it's uh, the latest right here that I want to show you guys. I just kind of randomly picked these out here. Can everyone see those okay? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> this is a still layout right here. It doesn't, I don't have any things that move within here, but 
<clears throat> that cis nexus crashing down to some guy. This will be <clears throat> this will be given to the animator, <clears throat> and he'll have to do something where Nexus is in an ex extreme back position, where he's like this and come crashing down this guy, and the guy will have to come up to him, and go falling down to the ground. <clears throat> Here's another still shot. This shot right here could actually be used as a simple still shot. Nexus does not have to move, but the ray beam uh, does. I think this one has to go backwards right here. So let's let's go backwards here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> how does that work here? Yeah. This is this is this how it starts? No. This is how it starts. <clears throat> so here's the beginning pose right here. That I these are all drawn by me, of course. <clears throat> so we have Nexus standing there, <clears throat> and let's see what he's going to do. He's going to move. Okay, so his arms stay the same, and his arms begin to move. So they move back a little bit, and that's all that moves there. The body's going to stay the same. So we we uh, <clears throat> we lucked out with that one. <clears throat> now there's going to have to be several poses that work <clears throat> as it goes from here to here. At least uh, four poses, I would say. Um, shot on twos. So that means it's shot twice. Every drawing is shot twice to make it move right. So we go from here to here, four drawings in between that. <clears throat> What's next here? Oh, so there's the final drawing right there. So <clears throat> in between here and here, there's gonna be at least three drawings. <clears throat> He's gonna move fast, and there could be several drawings after this even where he recoils. So this is all fun for me, and this is how I teach, I'm teaching myself the art of animation. So stretch way back, this is called an extreme um, anticipation pose, and then it's blam. It even says blam, how about that? Blam. Um, recoil or anticipation and blam. Oh, there's some more in here. This one's cool. I actually got this, these, um, these poses right here from, uh, I was looking at the Superman cartoons, the Fleischer Superman cartoons, of course. <clears throat> and if you recall a scene where Superman is lifting this giant robot, I think it's actually called the giant robots. Anyway, there's robots in it. You guys that know these cartoons know <clears throat> the episode, okay? So there's Nexus <clears throat> in blue. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to separate the figures onto different cells. Nowadays they use computers, which is much more convenient. I'm all for using computers with uh, the Nexus show. But I drew them in separate uh, colors, which made it a lot easier for me to see how the figures move right here. So <clears throat> there's Nexus in his fully crouched position, and uh, the robot is in like that. Okay, so the robot goes back a little bit. That's called anticipation. Yeah, he goes, Nexus lowers his legs a little bit, like he's crouching, because the robot has to have a lot of weight. Okay, and so now he goes up. <clears throat> but there's going to be poses in between here and here that someone else has to draw. I've provided the main poses. <clears throat> so there's going to be at least two drawings, I would say, in between here and here. <clears throat> you also notice there's cast shadows in the ground right there. That's going to give this thing a lot more believability <clears throat> if there's cast shadows. Most cartoon shows that are under extreme budgets or and time um, <clears throat> won't do these things for that for those two reasons. <clears throat> so the main poses are here. Nexus goes down, <clears throat> and then he finally begins to go up. Now, to show the weight of this robot, you've got to you've got to know how to draw a sense of weight here. So he's going to go up very slowly because because of the character weighs a lot. He's not just going to whip him up like he's made out of cotton or something or a Nerf ball. He's going to be slow up and slow up. So he goes from here to here. There might be poses in between those two right there. And he's going up more from here to here. 
is there, okay, so there's more poses right here. I believe that's the extreme. No, it's not. There's even more here uh, after this right here. So he's got to stretch way high. And that's the, that's the extreme right there. So from here to here, robot's going to stay pretty much the same. Either that or I just got lazy. <clears throat> so there's Nexus in his highest pose right there. Now he's got to throw the robot. I think I got lazy and didn't put the robots in here. So now he's going forward. He's going more forward. He's going more forward. And this is a neat trick that animators do right here. They show a blur. And this makes up for the fact that um, you don't have to draw a lot of in-betweens. If you just show this blur, your eye accepts that without all the in-between drawings. And it works better that way. These are tricks that people have, have learned over the last, God, uh, since the 1900s. I mean, I, mean, I mean, literally like 1910, I think, when they first started to figure this, this art form out. <clears throat> and then that's the final pose right there. And the robot's gotta go off screen, so we need more drawings for that. <clears throat> in Nexus, you don't, when you, when you get done with an action, you don't just stop. You, Nexus has to go down more, a little bit, and then come back up again. You guys know what I mean by that? Of course you do. So, he doesn't just stop. He goes down a little bit, and then he comes back up. So that's called settling, okay? Ah, uh, so that's a lot of fun. I just, uh, I do these, these, um, these sequences in my spare time because I just love doing it. Um... Whether there's going to be a Nexus show, I tell you, I'm getting so fed up with this Hollywood game. Um, <clears throat> I'm told that these, that these ventures in Hollywood can take up to 20 years. Well, folks, I don't have 20 years. I, I don't even want to wait another five years. I'm just, I see the way this game is played, <clears throat> and I think it's a bunch of garbage. I think it's a bunch of crap. Um, <clears throat> And I'm not the guy to wait around for this. And I, I just honestly want to go back to this drawing comic books if I have to wait uh, any longer. It's already been 30 years. Isn't that enough? You know, if these turkeys that we're showing this, this uh, we're trying to sell this show to can't get it by now, um, that, that just shows me that these people really are as stupid as I always knew them to be. Um, so I, I, there's a very good chance I'm just going to move on and just chuck it. <clears throat> And go back to drawing comic books, which is what I love. Uh, when you're drawing comic books, nobody's impeding me. Nobody's telling me what I have to do or put a stupid, silly cartoon dog in there. Um, or someone's telling me uh, because they're financing this, they have to uh, uh, have control over uh, all these myriad things. There's a good word, myriad, <clears throat> that, that are just completely impractical for a show like Nexus. If I can't have my way, I, I, there's no reason I'm going to say yes to anything. So that's where my mind is at right now. Uh, are we still able to be heard by everyone? God, amazing. Who, who would have thunk? Thunk. Um, I think that's it for right now. Is there, anything, is there any questions that people might have for me at all? Yes, I'm drinking my throat-clearing tea. Um... Someone said, hello, Steve, great poses and dy dynamic lines. Could we see Nexus in video games someday? I'm a game designer, and I would love to see your art generated in a game engine. Okay. <clears throat> in the event that it, nobody heard that, um, <clears throat> everyone knows how big the gaming industry is. It's, it's been big, actually far bigger than comic books for a long time. And <clears throat> there's, there's, there's no sign whatsoever of, of it... Uh, being, repl being replaced by something the latest fad or whatever. So the guy that wrote in is, is very much involved in the gaming industry. He wants to know if Nexus would ever be part of a gaming thing. <clears throat> uh, the answer is, um, I really don't know. I, it's, it's, I don't really have a particular interest in, in Nexus as a gaming vehicle. Um, <clears throat> that would, honestly, that would be the kind of thing where um, somebody would write, write, write in and say, hey, I want to do Nexus as this gaming thing. I would have to figure out how legitimate the guy is, um, <clears throat> what kind of uh, financial arrangement would be going on, of course, and <clears throat> if, he's, if he's for real. 
and what he can really, what, what his plans are for making this thing. If, it, if it's not going to be a major development in the gaming thing, I, you know, there's no reason for me to bother with it. So it has to be a, a, a definite professional hardcore kind of guy that really has the kind of clout to make this thing big. Otherwise, people like me wouldn't bother with it. Um, I just stick, I just stick to drawing comic books. But if he is a guy like that, um, definitely I would want to talk. But most of the guys that are writing with this stuff, uh, they don't have any kind of clout. So we'll see. <clears throat> Any other questions at all? Someone said, what about a crowdfunding campaign? Somebody wrote in and said, what about a crowdfunding campaign? Uh, for what? Um, we do have one coming up soon for the next Ash Can of Thune World, but they can pre-order um, Thune World number three right now. Uh, can, the, can the guy who wrote in be more specific about crowdfunding and what the purpose is? Other than that, we are all good. <clears throat> I think the throat clearance here is only partially effective here. Well, <clears throat> I need specifics on what it, what crowdfunding means. Um, <clears throat> if he's talking about either the gaming crowdfunding, um, uh, again, that's something I have very little knowledge of. But <clears throat> if it's about crowdfunding in the show, um, <clears throat> I've always been against that because the ideal situation for the show, the Nexus animated show, is I want to work with a bunch of people that are already established. I don't want to go hunting for things and uh, starting everything from scratch. That's not at all what I want to do. That's that's just a huge pain in the buttocks. Yeah. yeah. He said, uh, what about a crowdfunding campaign? And then he wrote back and said animation. Yeah, okay. Well, that, that clears it. Um, no, I, I don't want to. I don't want to crowdfund this thing. Um, <clears throat> crowdfunding to me, me means I'm responsible for setting up a studio, hiring people, doing all these things that I have uh, that I'm not exactly suited for. I'm an artist, um, <clears throat> and what I want is to have an entire staff readily available. In other words, a studio, and the studio has to be completely suited to one. They want to do this as badly as I do. Two, they have to have the talent to do the show like I want them to. And, um, you know, all the th there's literally hundreds of things that people have to have. Um, that's why I want a professional group of people that have everything going for, for them already. In other words, they've already done several productions of cartoon shows. Um, and I just step in and uh, take a faction of that group and uh, go and do my, you know, grab this part, this part of the group, or maybe all of them, and just lead, lead the way to uh, a successful show. Uh, I'm the only guy that knows what this show is about, um, how it has to look, how it has to sound, uh, the music, literally everything. And uh, the answer to that, as you guys well know, is it has to look like an old Hanna-Barbera show. Anyone who, who balks at that and thinks that's silly or uh, doesn't want to be part of that, go work in some other show. It's as simple as that. Um, but if they want that, then there are people I want on board. He just <clears throat> said, keeping the quality is important to you and I respect that. <clears throat> the guy wrote it back and said, uh, keeping the quality of the show is important and he respects that. Well, that's good because I respect that too. <laughs> <clears throat> no, look guys, um, being an artist, especially in the comic book field, is um, honestly, I think it's the greatest job on earth. In comic books, especially if you're doing an independent kind of thing as a vehicle for your life, is I don't think it can get any better than that. You're free. And that's why I'm always telling people that if you're unhappy working under the strictures of the big comic book companies, with all their silly mandates, like you can't put a, a little, a little uh, thing of uh, Popeye in the background or a little um, <clears throat> Acme sign or whatever, you know, the things that these guys go crazy about. Well, they put them in movies, uh, they put them on other TV shows, but they can't put them in comics. Well, want to explain that to me? Aren't we doing them a favor by putting these things in, advertising their product? But no, in comic books, the lawyers go go out of their minds with that stuff. Well, it's ridiculous. 
<clears throat> and I don't abide by these stupid rules, and I never will. So <clears throat> I've run into a lot of problems having um, watching these guys throw fits over the, kind of the little fun things I put in. The only people that are offended by them are the people that work at these companies. Everyone else likes them, including me. That's why I put them in. So <clears throat> these silly things that come up, that come about every uh, these these invented rules that they come up with this to take the fun out of doing comic books. Um, they're just they're just nonsense. They're invented by people that are paranoid and stupid, <clears throat> and uh, they enforce them with no sense of the bigger picture. And so it's, it, that's why I turned on a lot of work, uh, because they all enforce that. The only one who doesn't enforce that is me. So I'm, I'm free to do whatever I want, and that's the only way I'm gonna work uh, from now on. Yes, I'll do covers for different companies that they want. Uh, there's a very little chance of you, you know, sticking in the big face of Elvis to offend their legal, legal department. <clears throat> so I'm pretty safe for the covers. And I also want, it's also very important for everyone to keep their profile out there. Uh, and covers are normally the way to do it. So no problem with that. But uh, the rest of my life is going to be Nexus. Uh, and as you saw, they're going to be these incredibly expensive to put together hard covers. Um, they are massively expensive. The postage alone, when they told me the postage that <clears throat> we're, we have to uh, pay to send these things out, uh, they, they weigh uh, they weigh ten pounds, and uh, uh, the postage is like I don't remember what it was, but I I almost jumped out of my skin when I heard what it was, and uh, everyone pays a lot for this stuff. It's kind of obscene if you ask me, but that's that's what we're gonna do, and uh, um, it's tough, but that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life, and uh, aside from all that all that monetary stuff it's just so much fun and that aside from from all that stuff i just mentioned it's <clears throat> i can't tell you how much fun i'm having <laughs> doing these books it's just pure fun and it's a challenge believe me everything you do in comics is a challenge so unless there's any more questions which apparently there is um so let's see george peter said question what about Instagram's print on demand? That way you don't have to do upfront investing in printing slash inventory and people buy and get their books from you right away. Yeah, well, uh, the George guy wrote, George Peters wrote back, Peter wrote back and uh, wanted to know about print and demand. Well, that's actually the, um, the behind the scenes department here at Rude Do to take care of all that stuff. And if it's an option, I know they've looked into it. Me, I just draw the things. <clears throat> so I think that's going to be a wrap for today's Sunday live stream. You have one more question, that's it. Uh, after this last question here. Mm -hmm. um, are there any plans to collaborate with Mike Barron on another project, Nexus, or otherwise? Yeah, good question. Well, I think you guys saw um, me and Barron got together and did just recently, a couple weeks ago. Um, we were doing a Q&A and talking about our individual projects. Um, <clears throat> for the time being, I'm having too much fun stretching my wings and trying to do my own, uh, my own books, writing included. Um, it's something I've never tried to do. And uh, when I first attempted it, it was, I thought, I can't do this. But that's just fear talking. The fear of something that's uh, has been, something that's been completely untried. But, um, you know, it was t it was time for me to try it, and now that I'm I'm well into it, and my mind is so tuned to all the things that involve writing, like when I'm watching a movie, tuned into uh, the good parts of, of the the script, the movie the movie story, or reading something, or listening to a book on tape, my mind is is tuned into it like a laser focus, and <clears throat> when I see something I read or hear. It goes down in my sketchbook. I write it in the back of my sketchbook. If I see a name that I like of a character, it goes into my little uh, stash of names. <clears throat> so this is, I'm totally on a roll right now. So I don't want to stop that. I want to keep going. In the meantime, Baron has his own books going on. You know, Baron is the rightful uh, creator of Nexus. <clears throat> and if you go on his website, 
I think it's bloodyredbaron.com, you can see all the stuff he's doing because Baron is is just a, is such a go getter. He is um, he is a force of of nature. He just keeps he's such a professional. He just keeps turning out great stuff after great stuff. Uh, he's got his own next Nexus book going on. So um, the way I look at it is, you know, he's got his own thing going on. Go check out both versions and and uh, see so you've got both versions to to read, compare to, and and hopefully like both of them or, or like one or the other. It's, it's, uh, that's, what, that's the process of what you go through when uh, <clears throat> you have two versions of one character. Um, I've got my, char my version and I'm having a blast with it. And um, we both want to hear what you guys think about it. Um, I, I know that everyone says that, <clears throat> but that's always, I always consider that part two. We do, the, we do the, the creative work, we print it, we put it out there, you guys purchase it, and then we want to hear what you think, because we don't we don't learn anything unless people write in, and when they write in, the more honest they are, the better. Um, the longer the letter, the better. The more they get into details, the better. Uh, no matter what you think, is something that I wouldn't uh, appreciate, or something that you would you would think isn't worth mentioning. Uh, not true. <clears throat> It's the little things that you bring up that I find uh, that I learn the most from. So keep that in mind when the books come out. Uh, because we have a letter column, and I'd love to put some of these things into a letter column, okay? So uh, believe me when I say that, okay? So we don't have any more questions, and uh, we're going to wrap it up like we always have to do at some point. Um, this is another Sunday live stream coming to you live from the Steve Rood uh, garage where we uh, we keep all our merchandise and all this other stuff um, Gino needs money for operation we I need bread to keep going with the Thune world books uh, nobody's financing financing these books at all um, and keep tuned into uh, the September drawings sketch timber sorry <clears throat> there'll be one a day and you can buy these things uh, by looking at the website if you're interested so there'll be more news next week, and uh, we'll do it again, okay? Uh, thanks for writing in, read the questions, and uh, thanks to the guy that uh, got the question right. We'll see you next week. Take care. <clears throat>